Welcome to your Around the Peninsula. I'm Senior Airman Devin Notstein. Equipment can break at any time and become non-mission capable. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp introduces us to a team of mechanics that keep others in the fight. Whenever someone hears the term maintenance, the idea of being in a motor pool comes to mind. It's dirty, greasy, and in Korea during the summer, it's hot. For the biomedical equipment specialist of the 563rd Medical yeah. Logistics Company, their maintenance area is far removed from the motor pool. Throughout the Korean Peninsula, they service all types of medical equipment. Putting his skills to good use, medical maintainer Private First Class Josue Ibarra feels his job plays a vital role. No one really asked the question like, is this equipment good to use? Like, everybody thinks like a doctor is good to like save your life with the piece of equipment. But when it comes down to it, I maintain the equipment to make sure it can save someone's life. Army Sergeant Ryan Sharp, Camp Casey, Korea. The 563rd Medical Logistics Company is currently assisting the 2nd ABCT for their nine-month rotational deployment on the Korean Peninsula. Every field training exercise is full of support elements. Corporal Kim song Yup tells us how signal soldiers are a vital aspect of mission success. Communicating during a training or a real-world exercise is vital to the success of any mission. Radio transmission sites are just a one-way communication is shared across the battlefield. I'm out here for the month of July uh, providing retrain support for the division. Um, we have a lot of different nets that we run, um, different brigades, division nets, anybody in field exercises, anything like that, um, any support they ask, we have. We constantly monitor the nets with radio checks hourly with the division and the brigades that we support. So this is a real-life um, retrans net, permanently up 365 days a year. Um, so it's always supported throughout the division. One of the most important aspects of being a soldier is learning to perfect your respective craft. Countless hours are spent training just to achieve that goal. It's a good detail. It's a, you learn a lot. These soldiers who may have never touched the radio come up here and answer radios 12, 24 hours a day. So they learn a lot of radio etiquette. They learn a lot of uh, 1594 soldier stuff. Um, we're also able to get a little training in here. Producer Corporal Kim sang yeop KC-39er, Korea. KC-39er is located at the top of the Soyo Mountain in Dongducheon, South Korea. When joining the military, a lot of people generally think of personal courage. Army Sergeant Jared Dawn visits a place where personal courage takes the form of being a daredevil. This is day seven of the air assault course and anxiety is in the air. Today, students must conquer their fear of heights. So in phase three, we start them off with ground training. And on the ground training, we go over all the basic fundamentals of repelling, uh, the hand and arm signals that we use to tell them such a thing as the hook up and the command go. Lane wall to repel. Then we move into the slant wall, which is about a uh, 60 degree incline, and then they repel down a slant wall, doing the exact same thing that they just learned on the ground. Then we move them up to the tower onto the wall side, and they conduct the exact same thing. This tower is about 52 feet above the ground. How you feeling? Pretty good. Are you nervous? A little bit, just because we're pretty damn high, but. The first time that they get up on the tower, a lot of them are very nervous up there, weak need. A very common fear in any person is a fear of heights. And once you get over about 35 feet, your depth perception gets thrown off. And so right now they're at about 52 feet. So a lot of them are, are you know, pretty nervous. So we just try to stay calm, try to uh, reinforce the fundamentals and the confidence in their equipment. And just try to get them to take it one step at a time. Get it up the spine. I think it's gonna happen Stop trying to fight and get pretty. So you better get out there. Just be comfortable with it and put it back in the spine. And then by the time they finish their last grade of repels and stuff like that, they're very confident. Uh, and they they almost look like experts. So. You ready? Run it! Roll it! Right there, Sosa. Your legs out. And All right, Yes, sir. Are you ready? Ready? Pull it! The air assault students consistently displayed personal courage. Army Sergeant Jared Don, Camp Hobie, Korea. During the repelling phase, soldiers receive instruction on basic ground and aircraft repelling procedures. For more than 60 years, the Air Force's roaming entertainment group, Tops in Blue, has showcased their talents and abilities to various audiences all around the world. Their most recent performance was at Kunsan Air Base, Korea, 
where Army Sergeant Julie Yeager reveals what went on behind the scenes of these entertaining performers. So far this year, Tops in Blue has done several shows in 20 countries. They sing, they dance, and play instruments, all before a backdrop of moving lights and video imagery. But the performance doesn't come without some hard work behind the scenes. That's where Kunsan's eighth civil engineers, like Senior Airman Ryan Moore, comes in. If we don't get the uh, phases in the right order, the uh, equipment will start running backwards, so nothing will turn out right. The performers aren't the only ones with soul power. Thankfully, civil engineers had some tricks up their sleeves as well. Everything went smoothly, ma'am. Uh, the generators ran the whole time without any glitches or anything like that. Without the hard work the civil engineer team put in, the show could not go on. I feel privileged to help with the show because I know it's a good morale booster for the uh, whole base here at Kunsan. They had a wide variety of music and entertainment. So while people come to relax and enjoy the show, without the civil engineers providing power, there'd be no lights, camera, or action. I'm Army Sergeant Julie Yeager, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. Air Force personnel must participate in a multi-level competition to be selected as a member of Tops and Blue and are chosen for their specific talents. Military members and their families can find all the support they need, and sources say that it's been practically overflowing at Camp Humphreys for the last 50 years. Senior Airman Robert Mason has more on the story. Army Community Service at Camp Humphreys is celebrating its 50th anniversary. It's a great turnout. Uh, we have a bunch of Koreans come out and so what they do. Um, we have bracelet making and PIEF, um, Pyeongtaek, letting us know what's going on down there in the city and giving us different corners where we can go and, you know, it was really good. Activities from all around the military community make sure everyone stays entertained throughout the day. Also, uh, we have um, APs here that's doing giveaways. Uh, the Red Cross is here doing beanbag toss. The CYSS is here doing face painting. I mean, it's just non-stop activities. I, I, it would take so long for me to give you guys a list of all the things that we're doing today. <laughs> and today is more than just a celebration. It's a way for soldiers and their families to experience the resources available to them throughout their time in Korea. It is just for families and soldiers to know that we are there and that they can just come and, and talk to us about anything, and we'll be there to help them. Senior Airman Robert Mason, Camp Humphreys, Korea. Camp Humphreys ACS offers helpful information and services to military members and their families. The Far East District is the premier engineering, design, and construction agent for all Department of Defense agencies in the Republic of Korea. Petty Officer Justin Rouse introduces us to the new commanding officer. During his change of command, incoming Colonel Stephen Bales assumes all responsibilities for ongoing projects in the Far East District. When complete, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers will oversee the construction of 655 new and renovated facilities. Essentially, a new city is being built. I am personally and professionally extremely excited about uh, the future of the construction program uh, to provide modern and sustainable facilities for our soldier, sailor, airmen, and Marines, our DOD civilians, our rock counterparts, and our families. U.S. Army Garrison Humphreys will transform into the largest U.S. Army garrison in Asia. Petty Officer Justin Rouse, Yongsong, Korea. The Far East District has a highly trained workforce of both U.S. and Korean engineers. Because there's no better feeling than getting together with family, I'm going to take you to join in on a global family reunion for a very important day in history. Thank you. Welcome to the 2015 United Nations Command Armistice Commemorative. Ambassadors from around the world gather to honor a historic moment. They join to acknowledge the contributions made by the UNC Military Armistice Commission, the Neutral Nations Supervisory Commission, and the troops who have fought to protect the Republic of Korea for so many years. 62 years ago today, the signing of the ceasefire ended over three years of bloodshed and intended to serve as a framework for reconciliation. While it has not led to an official peace agreement, the armistice reflects the enduring commitment to the international community to preserve peace and stability. This marks the 62nd anniversary of the signing of the armistice. Senior Airman Devin Notstein, Demilitarized Zone, Korea. A reception was held after the commemorative ceremony for all of the guests to enjoy the company of each other in a peaceful place. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, August 6th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening.